Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We are getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I am chatting with the founder and CEO, Craig Nickel. Now, GMG, I know that we've followed along with them for a while. The company has three different divisions utilizing their made graphene products all of which are moving towards revenue generation. And this most recent news release that we're talking about came out just yesterday, May 18th. It's a collaboration agreement between GMG and Rio Tinto to explore the use of GMG's products to help Rio Tinto save on energy and utilize what they already do better. So Craig, there's a lot of details within this news release, but I do want you to simply break down the aspect of this agreement with Rio Tinto. Is it for all of the company's products and how are they looking at these products? Is it more of a testing phase or is it actually moving to integrate these products? Hey, Corey, great to be back on and always uh, good to chat with you. We're very happy and and proud to have this announcement come out with... um, with GMG and Rio Tinto to collaborate on using uh, GMG's products of energy saving and, and energy storage solutions. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a validation around our position of trying to reduce you know, companies' energy emissions and also help with their energy storage or energy transition. So we, we really see this deal as, as something which obviously is a non-binding deal, so we've still got to work through into the specifics, and that'll come through working with Rio on various different types of applications that we'd look to put our energy saving products into. And, and, and then hopefully that would then materialize into revenue and be able to reduce their emissions. Um, so we already have a number of energy saving products out there, which is fundamentally based on our graphene. And we'd look to try to help them with their decarbonization objectives. Obviously, Rio has um, an emissions target that they're um, very keen to, to deliver on. And we're very happy to try to help them with that. Uh, the other part of it is obviously that they will look to see how to use our graphene aluminium ion battery um, in their operations as well to, to to transition to a low carbon operation. You know, it's 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 fair to say pretty much everything on a mine site can be batterified, and GMGs talk to a lot of different company suppliers who want to batterify their battery. Their, their operation right now, typically say diesel burning right now. And so you can imagine everything on a mine site needs to have a battery. It needs to have a heavy duty battery in our, and our graphene aluminum ion battery does seem as though that is going to be the right type of battery for them. And so having that ability to offer that to Rio Tinto mining um, suppliers, so original equipment suppliers, uh, everything from a large mining tool truck all the way through to you know, hearing protection devices are available you know, for our battery as an application in the end. Obviously, not right now. We're, we've got to scale up. So we're really excited about that because we see it as an opportunity to work with the end customer, get those batteries out and tested in different technologies we're already talking to under NDA who could potentially bring them onto Rio's sites and show how our batteries work in really high performance and, and you know, high temperature, high duty environments. Now, the third one is really interesting is where we're gonna be able to look at using some of Rio Tinto's aluminum materials. They obviously have a range of different aluminiums and that is the only other really significant material that we have in our graphene aluminum ion battery. The graphene we make ourselves, it's about 50%. The other 50% is aluminum. And so, you know, one of the aims here is to be able to look at using Rio Tinto's low emission or no emission aluminium and so we would be able to make a very low emission uh, battery which would be able to state what those emissions are for that battery and bring that to market with a real clear advantage of being having very transparent and very clear on the emissions footprint that battery has had coming to market so that's the other area of this opportunity uh, Rio Tinto being the largest aluminium company there is it, it's obviously very exciting to work with them Obviously, a massive company, uh, been around a very long time, highly respected, and is is very keen to participate in this journey with us as well, which is obviously a key part of this opportunity. Okay, so it sounds like because the company does have those three product lines, batteries, thermal XR, and the graphene lubricants, it sounds like this 
collaboration with Rio Tinto hits all of them. So is this a product development deal or is this a deal that can move you towards revenue more? Yeah, so this is a deal where we'd be going in with existing products and into revenue opportunities. Obviously, they have to be demonstrated to work and on site and then provide that um, under some kind of procurement deal if Rio is happy with that, of course. Uh, And then how that gets to reduce emissions uh, for Rio, which is a big target for them, with something that that they want to then be able to use as as a competitive advantage, because they can see that having a reduction in, in, in emissions is something that they're very keen on doing. Uh, so hence, this for them is something that they're keen to do as well, because it then provides them clarity on how they're helping their customers and shareholders on their footprint. And so that, that provides us with pretty much means every one of our products, <clears throat> and we have various number of them, would provide uh, both revenue for products already tested and ready to go, through to some further development or testing and then revenue, and then others which are a bit further down the track, um, needing a bit more work, could enable us to do proving grounds, um, all based on our graphene's fundamental amazing ability to transfer heat, which is also the reason, you know, the core reason why Rio is, is working with us. So it sounds like there are new products in the development line as well. If Rio is helping you even further use your graphene within some of what they mine. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity because when when you have the core nanoparticle like our graphene available for various different applications that, that Rio would then want to be able to understand how to reduce emissions in, we could then very simply provide those in different fashions and forms to, to make that happen. But up front, just to be clear, we'll be very much focused on providing the existing products in our portfolio that are ready to go, especially at Thermal XR. Uh, and the graphene lubricant uh, for demonstration projects and then looking to see how Rio works with that and then provide that with um, you know further follow through and implementation potentially globally if it works obviously as well as we want it to. Okay so the thermal XR and the graphene lubricants those do sound yeah a bit closer to the revenue stage. How will those be tested? I assume they're already starting to be tested but can you give us more information on how that testing works? Sure. What we tend to do is provide uh, uh, different materials um, under different temperatures, and and then show what they do, what our graphene does for those different materials and different temperatures. And then Rio then looks at what it would potentially co- to do with those. And that's that's kind of where the collaboration gets you know quite confidential. But what that enables them to do is see how our new way of transferring heat is enabling them to to reduce potentially emissions that could be quite significant for them. And that is very exciting for them. It's very exciting for us because that's our core mission. That's our core vision to basically make make more with less. And hence, it really validates our whole vision and mission with one of the largest companies in the world. That's why we were very proud to be able to you know, announce this yesterday. Yeah, good on you, Craig. I know people want to know more about the potential for the batteries then within this relationship with Rio Tinto. It sounds like you're going to be creating maybe more customized pouch packs for them. Is that initially where that battery aspect is going or is there some other angle to this? Yeah, that's correct. So we've already got a number of requests from different companies asking us for pouch packs for different sizes, for different operations, applications that would definitely be on Rio Rio Tinto mine sites. It just happened to be, it happened at the same time. So uh, those conversations are already well underway, and there's many of them. So really, it's about working through those, getting the pouch packs made. Of course, we we haven't finalised our pouch pack commissioning. All the equipment's installed. We've just got to commission it. It should be pretty soon. We'll, we'll make that happen. Uh, in our quarterly report a couple of days ago, we did mention that our our climate-controlled lab is basically installed, and, and so that's all good. Uh, that, that provides us a very clear area for our scientists to to be able to make these batteries. And then it's about sending out these batteries, getting them tested in different ways, and then seeing which ones on our product roadmap the, in the best way. Um, we've really, we've got hundreds of applications and, and opportunities presented to us um, by different companies requesting for products, big and small around the world. And we've really got to work out what's the best ones for our customers, what's the best one for us, 
and then put them all together and you know and roll that out as a as a fashion as a pram. And so we'll we'll come out shortly uh, in the near term and, and and start talking about that in a full battery update, Corey. So that will enable shareholders and the like to be able to see where we're going with this battery. It really will show the potential for this. Has got so many applications. It's a bit it's a bit daunting to be honest on how many places this could be worked and used in. And so we're we're working through that so that you know when we hit the road we've got batteries that can be sold to immediately um, and that's obviously key for revenue generation for our company obviously at the same time we're still working on our coin cells which obviously rio probably wouldn't be too focused on <laughs> but the coin cells operate you know but you know i have a have a potential for some really near-term few, um, revenues just as long as we'll work through the last issues that we're working through um, we can get to that and then and take an investment decision on automatic plant then you know we can obviously see some revenues come through as well for that so that, those are the two main areas we're focusing on for these batteries, for how we will look to bring them to market in two different f- fashions. And that, that seems to be, be pretty popular, pretty, pretty well received by our customers. Um, so we won't be looking at any, any cylindrical cells for this point. Um, we're looking at really pouch packs, and that to be, can be used in almost everything that we've seen so far. Well, I'm sure you're busy with the pouch back angle because I've been getting questions about that consistently. And that does seem to be a big focus for investors as to just how versatile these pouch packs can be. Can you give us more information on the coin cells, though? You gave us a little hint as to what's going on there, but any larger update for how that's progressing? Sure. So in our quarterly, a couple of days ago, we said that our, our coin cells were sent to a limited number of customers for testing. Uh, they saw that they did like the fast charging, discharging. Um, they said that our, basically our battery has basically the same capacity charge per square centimetre that the lithium batteries already have. So that puts us into a space of very high competitive uh, angle already in terms of our capacity charge per square centimetre. And that's the main thing you look to look, look to work on on your pouch pack. So it, it really talks to this being a great pouch pack battery, and which will enable everything from EVs to grid to to laptops and phones. And and that is really exciting um, to be able to get validation from some really big companies around how we can get to these very high, respectively, um, capacities per square centimetre. Um, makes us feel like we're on the right track. Um, the third area was, you know, is, is basically around the voltage for coin cells. It, people are um, obviously needing a three and a half volt. Uh, we've got ways of, of designing that, um, and so that's what we're, we're, we've got already a, a, that kind of figured out on how to get to a three and a half volt because our volt, our batteries is currently 1.7 volts. Um, so we don't see an issue with that anymore. We, we've got to work through it, but I, I don't see that being an issue. Really, what we're working on now is working on the map, the optimal capacity, uh, and 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 the best way to get that in a sustained cycle. So we can put something to market which we know will work, will get to the right capacity that people will buy. Is all the things we say it is. It's it's recyclable. It's it's thousands, you know, hopefully thousands of cycles. Um, it's rechargeable. It's it's very safe. Um, it you know it's it's not going to hurt people potentially if they if they swallow it like some lithium batteries currently do um, and then it's highly recyclable so it ticks make sure it ticks all those boxes so in order to get there we're you know we've hired a number of scientists and engineers just in the last um, couple of months and they're coming in and doing a lot of work there and we've also done a lot of work on um, in in making our battery grow graphene and we keep pushing that and we'll continue to work that and the trend is our friend there on making sure we make it the right way every time uh, for our battery. So still some ways to go, but very uh, confirmatory in terms of our trajectory um, of where we want to be to be able to take this to market in the very near term for a coin cell, very simple coin cell battery, just so we can prove to the world that we can make batteries uh, and not just graphene. And also, you know, validation of companies like Rio Tinto and Bosch around our technology, showing that there is something there and we need to get to market and, and deliver that so that everyone really understands that that is the case. Okay. Thanks for that update there, Craig. Just a final point here is that with this new collaboration deal with Rio Tinto and moving forward of the battery division, plus the other two divisions, 
How many collaboration agreements and deals do you have right now with other companies? Because you mentioned that there are other large companies testing out your products, even governments testing out your products. What do you have in the works right now? Honestly, it's hard to keep up. We've got new people coming on board to try to keep in track of all of it. We have numerous uh, global brands, you know, under NDA now, and we're working through the testing requirements for them, what type of battery they want, what, when do they want to see it, what kind of size and the rest. We've obviously got some you know, work going on in, in, with our um, trials and, and work on Thermal XR. That is very exciting. We've said in our quarterly that we believe we can now improve the heat transfer and the efficiency of brand new air conditioners. And we're doing further work to validate that. That will mean that we can make way through to original equipment suppliers of, of these heat exchanges uh, for air conditioners and not just focus on existing installed as our target market, which really opens up to ourselves to a whole new range of sectors, um, which is very exciting globally. And so there's, hence there's some work, a lot of work going on there as well. And, and so, you know, broadly, you know, the company is, is moving forward on a range of products, range of companies in a range of countries. Uh, and and it is it is very exciting, Corey. I have to say, um, I've been marketing energy products for you know near probably 25 years now, and I've never been in such a, a whirlwind of action. Um, it's we we're, we're bringing people on, very very much attracting really good top talent, uh, which is all key to us because all we have are, are really good people to make this happen, and that's also helping me belief on our growth story as well. All right, Craig. Thank you very much for the update. It's been a little while since I last had you on, but it sounds like every division is still moving forward here. I get a lot of questions about this company, so I will keep bringing you on on a bit more regular basis. If anybody has any follow-up questions, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. In full disclosure, I am a shareholder of GMG. Craig, thank you again for the update. Have a good rest of your week. Thanks, Corey. Talk to you soon.